Hey guys, today I'm here with my friend Trey. Hello. He's actually been in my videos a couple times, so he's an uh, OG. Welcome back to the yeah, channel. I'm so excited to be back with Richard Harmonation. <laughs> but yeah, today we're gonna talk about everything you need to know about life sciences slash pre-med at University of Toronto. Because this guy is in life sciences. Yes, I am. So how about we start off the interview by introducing yourself? What's your name, year, and your program? Well, my name is Federico. I am in fourth year. My first major would be cell molecular biology, and the other one would be health and disease. So so I know that life sciences is considered to be one of the more competitive majors. So in a scale of 1 to 10, how competitive do you think your program is? My specific program? Uh, dep well, because like in U of T, how it works, like you have like all the majors, right? You first mm -hmm. start off like as life sci. And like U of T has like this like major ranking system where you have like a type 1, type 2, type 3. For my specific programs, so we're type 1. So they're they're not that competitive to get into. But like in my cell molecular biology one, it's slightly more competitive because I'm like in this subdivision of it where it's like mm -hmm. a focus group that's like this group that meets like once a month that's led by like these two professors. Then what was the lowest class average you've seen in a course? I'd say like in the 50s, 60s. 50s, 60s for class average? For a class average. What was that course if you don't mind? HMB 265. It's a genetics course. The second year like genetics course, mm. like human genetics. It gets pretty bad, like pretty hard. Then what was the hardest course you ever took? Was, was it the genetics I course? I think that one was probably one of the hardest. Okay. Or like maybe stats. All right. Then, contrary to the hardest course, what was the easiest course in your opinion? For me, it was like the intro bios, like bio 130 and 230 were pretty mm. easy for me. What was the class average for those courses? Pretty high, I'd say. Like, you saying, like, like in the 70s, I'd say. In the B range? In the B range. Okay, okay, that's pretty high. <laughs> then, who is your favorite professor? My favorite prof. I forgot her name, I don't know, but she taught like first year chem. But if I'm talking about one that I can remember, probably, probably Ashley Bruce. She's nice. She's a nice person. She mm. teaches, she's like, like develop, developmental biologist. Okay. So she does like uh, developmental biology, which is like I think CSP 328. Three, three then how many hours does an average life science student study in a day? I don't know, like four to five hours? Four to five, five. Okay. Probably. What about during like exam season? Exams, it gets ramped up. So that, would that ramp up to like seven, eight hours? Yeah, like basically. So then right after graduating, uh, I know that there's not much uh, job available for just life science students, but what would you say is like the starting salary for life science students? Uh, if you want to go into life science specific jobs, maybe you can find like a very level entry of like in some lab, like very entry Some like research lab level. assistant, something like yeah, that? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Probably get like above definitely min like minimum wage for sure. So maybe like 50, 60K, something like that? Maybe. Okay, yeah. okay. Then how much is average tuition? 8, 10K. Okay. Okay, eight to ten k. Eight to ten. Okay, k. not bad. Do you know? Do you know how much I pay? Your Domestic ramen. Your ramen, so probably like hundred k. <laughs> That's for international. International That's is like insane. 70k. That's insane. Um, That's domestic is 17. 17? Almost? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, almost double, eh? Come to business school, everyone. Come don't, to business school. I mean, do it because like you'll get like a job right away and exactly, you don't have yeah. to worry about your future. <laughs> like I do. Then, describe a typical life science student. Like, life science students are pretty diverse, right? Because like, mm. like life science is such so many topics, right? You can go from right. like ecology, evolution biology. Like psychology. Psychology, yeah. all these stuff. So it's, it's a very mixed group. You can't really like put like in a like, like a group, like a group, group thing, yeah. right? Okay. So it kind of depends what what majors you go. Then how is the party scene at life side? I don't say like again depends majors. Usually I don't see that many parties like specific life side parties, right. right? Like you have people in life side that go out and party. All right. So then how do you find love at life side? Is can you find love? And I heard that life side students like to date other life side students. Is that true as well? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's probably easy, like, it's easier to probably find someone in your own major. I mean, it's probably easier than engineers, because, like, they have, like, no fucking time. Uh, I mean, pre-med is pretty, like, It's still pretty intensive, yeah. right? Are Just you personal know? experience, maybe? Uh, cut? Okay, cut, cut, cut. cut. <laughs> and now a word from our sponsors. So, today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes that will help you discover new interests in your life. For me, I always want to get better at coding. So in the beginning, I joined Skillshare in hopes of finding some classes that'll help me learn some advanced coding skills. And sure enough, on Skillshare, I was able to find so many members like Elvin Wan that did just that. I was genuinely surprised on how good the quality of the classes were. So after that, I expanded my interest into other things such as cooking, drawing, and even writing poetry. So it's needless to say, the value of discovering new interests with Skillshare was a tremendous 
greatest pleasure in my life. So as we head into the new year, I also want to give you guys a chance to embark on your Skillshare journey with a free 30 day trial, which is in the link in my description. And with this free trial, I'm sure you guys will also discover new interests with Skillshare. Also, only the first thousand people to use this link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So claim yours before it's gone. So thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and let's get right back to the video again. Then would you say your program is more male dominant or female dominant? I've seen a lot more females than males mm. in my classes. Then describe U of T lifestyle in one word. D you know what? I'm so diverse. Okay. Because there's a diversity of people in there. There's a diversity of topics you can go into. Then could you tell me a little bit more about like internships or research opportunities, yeah. like along the line of like life sciences? Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of research opportunities you can do. Like this past summer, I did this research course at U of T mm -hmm. where you do research abroad. Right. So that's why I was in Denmark. Cause I was doing a research at a, at a lab in the University of Copenhagen. I know for sure in my, both the majors I'm in, they do provide like a course like that. Mm. I don't know about the other main, the other uh, life science. They also do have like uh, research courses like in your third and fourth years. There's also like, you can do work study. You can probably like do work study like to do at, like work at a lab. U of T has a pretty good connection with like all like a, like the hospitals in the downtown, Toronto like General. sick kids, Toronto General, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Then what would you say the most common career path is for life science students? Well, a lot of life science students are like, I want to be a doctor. And that's probably like a lot of them want to be a doctor. I don't know if that's the most common career path because like not everyone can be a doctor. Right. A lot of them like don't work in actually actually in an actual like uh, life science related field. So now we're going to move on to more of like the high school stuff. Did you have to take any like specific course to get into U of T life science? You have to take English regardless of anything. Right. You have to take an English and then calculus. I think you need So tying in with that question. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend any courses or extracurriculars for you know students who might be looking to join yeah. life science? If you're looking at specifically life science, uh, I would very much recommend taking AP Biology. That's mm. a godsend. It actually helps a lot. If it depends on the major you want, if you can work at like a zoo or an aquarium, mm. if you want to go into like ecology, evolution biology, stuff like that, it will probably give you like a lot of insight into that field. Then what are some other universities that are known for their like you know life science programs? Well, UFT is pretty good. UBC, McGill. Oh, I forgot which one it is. One has like a really good, not specifically life side, but health side. That was like McMaster. Uh, then moving on to our kind of like our closing comments. Uh, do you have any tips, general tips for students who might be looking to come to UFT life side? Don't be worried if your first marks come out really badly. No, I 100% agree with yeah. you. Guys. I think that goes for like any Other faculty yeah. or anything. There is definitely that curve when yeah. you first graduate from high school. So yeah. Don't You'll so don't worry, like if you want to go into like, I don't know about med school, but like if you want to go into your masters, they only really look at the last two years. Well, those are some good advice that Federico came in and gave us today. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in my next one.